Tiffany Stuckey with Arts Altoona Talk. Thank you so much for joining us here today at the Altoona Grand Hotel. We are joined by Barbarella Crane, who had played for the uh, symphony for 62 years, and our maestra of the symphony, Teresa Chun. Um, and as always, don't forget to subscribe to Arts Altoona Talk. So, um, to begin, the Altoona Symphony is gearing up for a very special birthday celebration this week. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, so. definitely. Um, Altoona Symphony is one of the most um, uh, orchestra that has the most longevity in a way, you know, particularly um, you're talking about immigration of Europeans coming to America and then slowly going west, you know, as they went along the railroad, they kind of settled in different areas. And now Tuna became one of them very favorite homes for a lot of people for a long right. time. Right. And uh, the interesting thing was, you know, the, it's not accidental that we set up with an orchestra because you think about early immigrants, particularly the Germans, and then the a lot of Italians, you know, Irish, they all have the music and they bring a lot of their culture to this area right. uh, because they wanted something that reminded them of home right. and all the culture and good things that they enjoyed and that's how it was the beginning of the Icon Symphony. It first started with a quartet, like four string players, and okay. then gradually just adding on and building up into a full-grown professional orchestra as it is now. So 90th season is a big deal for us. Yeah, because it's yes. a testament of time and also of the stamina of the people that support the orchestra and also the, the love of the community for an arts organization. Yeah, now one of the things that makes the, the symphony so special is that it is one of the longest continuously running symphonies. Yes, correct. Um, what are some other things that you really feel like make the Altoona Symphony so special? Oh, to the symphony, really, you know, when you talk about an orchestra, it's really not a space, it's not an organization, it's actually a collection of people. Mm -hmm. And I think that our Tuna Symphony, the reason why it was so, uh, so well you know, put together is because the people that play in the orchestra are really, really loving what they do. We have a common goal, and the common goal is music. And to spread good music and bring good music to the community. And then, you know what? Of course, the other part of the success of the Altoona Symphony is because of the big support of the audience. And I always say this, and I'll say it again, Altoona has some of the best listeners in the country. Well, that's great. Good job. <laughs> um, so, uh, Barbara, you you were with the symphony for 62 years. Yes. Um, what, what instruments did you play? What was your experience? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, I played viola. My father was a violist. Okay. And he was one of the original members of the oh my gosh. String Ensemble. So I have a long history. When I was five years old, he used to take me along the symphony rehearsal. That's amazing. <laughs> so uh, music's part of my life, and it's, it's important. Yes, it's definitely. Important. Yep. So. And now... Um, and Teresa, this is your 11th year mm -hmm. with the symphony. Mm -hmm. I, I know you have conducted orchestras around the world. <laughs> um, what brought you to Altoona? Uh, when I came in, it was 2007, you know, uh, when I did my... Actually, I, I'm sorry, it was 2008, you know, when I did the audition, right, in April? Yeah. Right. I came in, you know, the first thing I fell in love was actually the people that played in the orchestra. Right. Because there they was such openness, you know, to it. You know, we always say it's like a dance, you know, if you meet each other halfway, you know, that would be great. You know, but I felt like the orchestra was overwhelmingly much more than happy when I came in. They were so eager to make music. And I just felt it was such a, a, a calamari, you know, in that, you know. So I thought this would be a good play for me to do. Yeah. And she came in and blew all the other contestants out of the water, <laughs> if I may say so. <laughs> that's wonderful. Well, that's what I know um, in talking to some of your musicians locally, um, they talked about how you really brought such a high 
quality of music and some really amazing um, pieces to life at the, uh, at the Mishler. Um, so maybe for both of you, what, what were the, some of the most memorable performances at the, oh, at the symphony? My goodness, there are so many of them, right? <laughs> you talk. That would be, that would just be hard to, hard to pick. Right. I mean, I, and the thing of it is, I know I learned a lot from Teresa because she's tough. And she demands, she's demanding, but she <laughs> is respectful of the musicians. And right. she lets you know exactly what she wants. Right. And uh, when you don't mind somebody demanding, right. you know, when... when when you know that they care about you. Right. So. Well, I think the most important thing is, you know, number one, if you're going, if your product is music, uh, right. like what we offer for the audience, right. the main thing is about what you serve up, you know, mm -hmm. and then it's really not about us because we're not creators. We don't write music, right? Mm -hmm. right. We can only recreate what's been written and it was being understood all throughout all the generation. Mm -hmm. And um, I spent a lot of great deal of energy in putting together a program. Right. And it was one of the most painful but rewarding things to do. Selecting a good program is like preparing, preparing a great dinner. You know, so when people come in from the very beginning all the way to the end, they can taste different flavors. It's not just overwhelmingly one side, you know, like five different types of steak, you know, that wouldn't be very fun. Right. <laughs> you know, but if you would vary it and say you start with a great soup and then a wonderful salad, a little bit appetizer, a little sorbet to clean the palate, and then, you know, a, a wonderful dinner with some great wine to it, then it becomes a very fulfilling meal. For our ears, it's the same thing, you know, because we're being served, you know, with multiple stimulations, which is sound, you know, mm. and um, that's a very big element of how I put into it, you know, just a mix of different colors, but also the intention of the composition, you know, because what happened is, by and large, when you tell people, you know, Prokofiev Fifth Symphony, most people will be like, I don't know what it is, you know, <laughs> but if you say something like, you know, hey, it's about, you know, Russia in the 1950s then you understand, that, wow, okay, well, I can kind of relate to that time, you know, right. because there was so much tension internationally, then it becomes something different. And I think a lot of people think that music is by and large just entertainment. That's the difference between great classical music and just, you know, entertaining music, you know, um, because what happened is there's a lo lot of social historic elements to it, right. and I think it would be so interesting for the audience to find out. And then we, we always tell stories, don't we? When we oh, do yeah. concerts, we yes. all, there's always a story behind everything. And there's always a reason for us to go about things in a certain way. So this is really just to let everybody know that, you know what? Hey, everybody is just about one thing. It's about sharing what the experience is, a human right. experience. And that's exactly what we're doing. That is such a beautiful, that was beautiful. Um, now, I know that um, you, you've worked to bring music to our, our local youth, um, and that you do several things outside of just the performances at the Mishler Theater. Mm -hmm. Could you tell our audience about some of the outreach and some of the programs that the, the symphony offers? Well, the orchestra has uh, a uh, learning program, you know, with uh, different youth coming in and then taking lessons with our musicians. You know, that's a very big part of it. And another thing that is really big is that we started a youth orchestra program um, that is going to be run by Kelly Detweiler and Stephanie Everett. And they are two teachers from Altoona High School and also from College Park High School. And uh, they will be really, you know, coming in to run the, uh, the youth orchestra. It started out several years ago, like six, seven years ago, as a spring camp in the summer. But it's basically just has grown so much that we just feel like, you know what, it's, it's too good to be just within a one week in the summer. We've got to have it spread it out a little bit more. So we're expanding it, you know, into a more uh, complete program. We're going to start it part-time in the summer first, and eventually, when we gather more energy, you know, some, sometimes you have to test it out, and then you can do more. Uh, we also have done a lot of collaborative projects. Uh, you know, I, we have done things with the uh, Allegheny Ballet. We have done things with the Cathedral. We have done things with our uh, Holiday Sport High School, Altoona High School, 
Hence the Altoona IUP Juniata and the Wisconsin Corral. Corral. And then even uh, Penn State State College, you know, I will have correct collaborated with all these people. And the most important thing about that is that, you know, we want the awareness to be out there that, you know, we, not just Altoona Symphony, but all the other people are working towards the same goal, which is to have a lot of fun doing classical music. Right, uh, right. Speaking as a teacher, these outreach programs are very important because these kids are tomorrow's audience. Yes, absolutely. And, and some of them have not had any contact with classical music, right. and, and this is a way to reach them and pull them in. <laughs> And I know that you are also an instructor of piano, correct? Yes. I, I've met a lot of your students, former yeah. students and current students. So. She's tough, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have that in common, right? <laughs> now, um, could you tell us a little bit about the musicians that play um, within the, the symphony? I know there's a mix of, of local performers, there's guests that come out of town, and then you, know, I, you feature guest artists as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have local players. We have players from the nearby area. We have people that come all the way from uh, Argentina. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. And then uh, yeah, we have a lot. Of, basically, we have a lot of people that really love the orchestra. Uh, there was one point. It's very interesting. You know, that one of the last dinners that we had. You know, with uh, Tom Vasella. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, a pair of orchestra, lovely orchestra couple that you know would always put on dinner for us. You know, right. at the end of the season. And that dinner, we counted 12 different countries in the same room. And we had That's like 20 amazing. people, right? It's amazing how we draw. Uh, a lot of them are students coming from UK, you know, Carnegie Mellon, you know. But, you know, you have to look at the diverse background. We have people from Thailand, uh, Iran, I'm from Hong Kong, China, mm -hmm. Taiwan, you know, Argentina, like I say, you know, Venezuela, concert master from Venezuela. His wife is from Georgia, the country, not, right, the, not, not the state. state. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's just amazing, but everybody right. comes together because of what happened is they feel like this is such a great place to make music, and when they come here, they feel like they're coming home. Yeah. And I think that's a really, really important thing for us to remember. Our tuna has provided this really great place for music to play. Right. And you don't feel like you're playing with foreigners. <laughs> you know? right. I mean, we come together as a family. Right. But this as is why music is an international language. Yeah. When you sit down, when you play it, everybody just go right there. We speak the same language. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's why... Um, Music is such a, a crucial part of the human yes. experience. Yes. It's, it's everything. It's why this orchestra exists. It's because of the music. Yep. Now, as we start to finish up, uh, could, could maybe both of you share what is the inspiration for your work? What, why do you do what you do? And Well, music is a part of my life. Yeah. And it makes me a better person because... I can express myself mm -hmm. like I can show all different emotions and if I start to play Chopin's revolutionary age, don't come near me, I'm furious. <laughs> but then when I'm done, I can stop and calm down and look at the situation and right. give a better understanding and be nicer to other people. Than, but right. every every emotion that you feel can be expressed in your music. Right. And it's always been a part of my life because of my father, and, and I wouldn't know what to do without it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wish I, I could say this, you know, because my family is totally non-musical. <laughs> <laughs> my father did not play, you know, in the string yeah. quartet, you know, he played a record. <laughs> But you know, the interesting thing was, you know, is that um, music play a very important part in my life because this is how I learn to relate to other people. Um, I think there's something about music that expresses the greater good of us. You know, it's bigger than me. It's so much bigger than each of us. Yes. You know, and the collectiveness of it is so strong and so powerful that I, 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 I have no other choice but to want to be a part of it because it makes me feel like and I'm part of like a human conscience, you know. Right. So and that's the whole reason why I'm doing it, you know. I mean if I if I would to have to 
uh, choose something easier to do, you know, that wouldn't be music. <laughs> it's a very tough thing to do. But, right. you know, but that always persuades me to go back, you know, because when I see how much good that comes out from performances, how much we share, the passion that we have, and the inspiration that we get, I, I cannot see myself doing anything else. I love that. Well, thank you. Um, and maybe as our, our last question, what does the future hold uh, for the Altina Symphony, for you both? Um, any exciting plans for the upcoming season? <laughs> She's quiet. <laughs> She's waiting for me to answer that. Yeah. So that's a very complicated question because it has a lot of parts, right? So, right. But, but I think that you know, Altina Symphony is at a uh, very crucial point right now because for the past 10, 11 years, we have worked a lot towards different things. You know, I throw a lot of new things into the mix, you know, because uh, my programming is a little, you know, different, you know, compared to other people, you know, so usual, usual. I do a lot of collaboration. I bring a lot of new things in, you know. Um, I was just counting the other day. I was looking at my 12 years here. I just going into my 12 season. I asked myself, like, how many times have I repeated something? You know, very the answer rarely. Is very rarely. Very rarely. Almost never, you know. Yeah. So, but, you know, I have only touched this much of the surface of classical music. So you are talking about what else to do, you know, I mean, we've got a lot. We've got 400 years of history of classical music. Right, yeah. right. There's a lot more to do, right? <laughs> yeah. But the most important thing is, how do I present all this vast amount of music in a very meaningful way and continue to share with the audience and have them understand and come over to, to understand what we do? That's our continuous goal. Uh, I think that's always something new to do, and, um, and sometimes people will always say, you know what, I go to the symphony, and I always see like people that are older, you know what, it's only natural, because what happened is, you know, for a young person with today's attention span, you know, yeah. it's kind of hard for them to seek to right? But we are doing that kind of education with another means. Meaning, I think kids have to learn to participate in music in their career yeah. in order to be part of it. And that's why we have this education program, you know, that's why we have the collaboration program. By the time they get to a certain age, this stuff will stick with them and they'll come back, you know, I trust you, they will come back for it, you know. So, Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for um, for coming to Altoona and leading our symphony. And thank you for joining us, Barbara. It's amazing to hear that your your father was the start of this nine years ago, which is pretty amazing. And, and 62 years of um, treating our, our audiences to music is pretty impressive. So thank you both so much for being here. Um, and now, audience, it's your turn to share. I hope that you'll join in the discussion by leaving a comment below. Did this video inspire you? Do you have a relevant story to share with our subscriber community? If so, let us know in the comments below. And if you haven't had the opportunity yet, please like this video um, right here on YouTube and on Facebook at Arts Altoona. We have a weekly newsletter that has something for everyone in Blair County and beyond. Um, and thank you, audience, for your part in ensuring that everyone knows how amazing the Blair County community is and the people and organizations like Barbara Weller Crane and Tracy Chung with the Altoona Symphony um, that strive to make it that way. So we hope to see you next time at Arts Altoona Talks.